O'Connor, he, him from Texas, science plausibility of giants during biblical times. All right. Well, you know, Richard, you brought up giants. Uh, and so you're going to have to talk about giants now uh, with Connor. Connor, how you doing? You are on with Jimmy and Richard. Hey, guys. First off, Jimmy, I'd like to say I feel for you about your cousin. My family's going through a similar thing. We just discovered our grandmother has stage four this last week. Yeah, I really appreciate so, that. And to... um, yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I, I wish you all the best. You know, I, I, I hope things get better and, and, and everybody feels better soon. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, going through this, uh, I'm going to go off of what is known according to uh, historians and archaeologists about ancient human societies. And that at the time, uh, this stuff like would have been uh, told would have been before it was ever written down on anything. It was when humanity was going was making the transition from nomadic hunter gatherer societies to agricultural societies, and that is where the uh, the key to this is because, as we know, during the ancient uh, agricultural societies. People were, even by today's standards, still uh, shorter than uh, modern people. But the interesting thing bef about that is hunter ga ancient hunter-gatherers, Paleolithic times and all that, because of the amount of physical activity that was required to gather enough food, and it would have it caused an incre uh, in a larger skeletal and muscular system to where they would have been around... On, they would have been easily getting up to seven feet tall, whereas the average for the early agricultural societies would have been closer to five foot. And so, it, because of biblical times was more was more like coming out of hunter gather and going into that other period, then on, that would on. be Can why I, people. I need saw to recap. I need a recap. I need a recap, Connor. Hold on. So, are you? Forgive me if I heard, misheard you. Are you saying that hunter gatherers were taller than people after the agricultural revolution, roughly eight to ten thousand years ago? You're saying you're saying hunter gatherers were were larger because they were more active it, and okay, so you're you're looking at far more physical activity. So they were like essentially living a, a workout style type of life, right? Like they were just so physically active that they were, I don't know, jacked. They were they were jacked up. They were they were pretty big, right? Is that what you're saying? Uh, even before the invention of cooking, our jaws are, are were much bigger than what right, they so are today. Like just I wanna, the amount of physical activity required for everything. Yeah. Well. All right. So I can I can speak to that a little bit, and um, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but I don't know of any evidence that supports what you're saying. In fact, I would say that all of the evidence points to the contrary, that people were smaller. Uh, the reason why they were smaller is because they had less calories coming in every day. They were burning more calories, yes, but they had less coming in than when they did during the agricultural revolution. They had to go find their food, and it wasn't always guaranteed. When the agricultural revolution happened and people uh, were able to um, domesticate plants and animals, they had more calories at their disposal. They could eat more. Uh, they, they could eat whenever they wanted. I mean, that wasn't the case in hunter-gatherer societies, you know? So as a result, humans actually grew larger, and that continues to happen. Uh, you know, evolution has not stopped. Well, I don't know of any I like evidence. To, uh, counter Excuse that me. Real quick. Just one, yeah, one second. I don't know of any evidence that says that human beings used to be bigger and that their active lifestyle made them bigger. Well, there so are a tell. few uh, uh, hunter-gatherer uh, tribes in Africa where that is actually the average for them just to be seven feet tall. Okay, but are those giants? And is that one tribe? I mean, well, when we're talking about hunter-gatherers and we're talking about early humans, we're also talking about a very, very nuanced uh, situation. You had uh, – or, or, or 
nuanced set of circumstances. You had areas that the climate was different, food was more scarce, and you had uh, people isolated to islands. They grew differently. You have, if you're going to talk about people in Africa where uh, the weather's always warmer, they have more access uh, possibly to food. And if you're going to, and it, it might be expected that, you know, they, they would be different uh, as, as compared to somebody from a completely different lifestyle, it's a completely different set of circumstances. And there is no way to accu accurately look at hunter gatherer societies today and make, make a conclusion on hunter gatherer societies of 10 to 20, 10,000 plus years ago. And the reason is there's no tribe in the world today, even if there are claims that they are untouched by humanity. They are, they are all, they have all been touched by humanity. Every, everybody on this planet has all in some way been touched by globalization, uh, changing conditions, weather, uh, you know, climate change. Those are all the products of industrialization and a lot of tribes that have no contact with the outside world still face those consequences. It's happening in Africa. Uh, the, the Lake Chad is drying up. People who rely on that water source, people whose livestock re rely on that water source are turning to uh, terrorist groups because their, their livelihood is gone. Uh, fishing societies, fish are moving away because, you know, they are uh, going into warmer waters, but they're also being overfished. Even if the, the tribes or the societies that go after those, those fish for food um, are not having contact with the, the outside world, they're still impacted by it. So I, I kind of went on a slew of things there. Um, I would like to punt it to Richard real quick. And then um, I would like to see what you have to say about that. Hello, I have a friend called Google. And Google is very good <laughs> to me. And Google has returned to me the seven tallest tribes in Africa. The seven tallest tribes in Africa are the Somali tribe uh, of an average feet of five foot nine inches. The Anuk tribe with a five average of five foot ten inches. The Tutsis average of five eleven. The Wolof tribe who have an average of six feet tall. The newer tribe, which have an average of six feet tall. The Maasai, which have an average of six foot two. And the Dinka, which have an average of six foot three. They are the tallest tribe in Africa. Now, what you might be pointing to is examples of exceptionally tall people within those tribes. And indeed, the Dinka tribe do have uh, one example. Manu, I might spell, uh, pronounce this wrong, so excuse me. Manut Bol, a former National Basketball Association, play, Association player, was seven foot seven inches tall. But the average for that tribe is six foot three. So there is no notion whatsoever that modern tribes in Africa have an average of seven feet tall and above. I also know of no tribe, like no uh, group of people, people in the past with an average height of seven feet or above. Uh, I'm not sure where you got that information from. I'd like to see the kind of studies and background checks for that. We have an email which you can send that to. Uh, but, uh, you know, you know, respond to myself and Jimmy because, you know, you, you made the claim that the, uh, the tribes in Africa with an average size of seven feet uh, a quick Google sh uh, search disproves that. And that is from uh, We Afrique, which is an African website which talks about African people. You know something? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna kick this over to, to uh, Connor in a minute. You know, I, I want to give you a chance to respond. But we have a backup host here uh, who's got some expertise in geology. Uh, he knows a thing or two. OK, and he's got some comments and I want to see what he has to say um, and, and maybe he can reflect on your claim as well. So, crew, if you could drop me out, bring in the great Kelly Laughlin and let's get him to respond. But first, Connor, you can go ahead and start responding uh, and wait for Kelly to come up. So get, uh, the only thing I could say to what uh, Richard just said is like maybe I do need to uh, relook into uh, what I saw and double check on that maybe i saw some maybe i saw something different than maybe i just need to uh double check uh sources again now 
you know, you were you were making good points. I just thought, you know, it was a very interesting topic to go over. But earlier, the only thing I could say as a counter to what you said, Jimmy, about people starting out in the agricultural revolution having access to all the food they needed, they actually did, and famine was still very common up until the modern day. So people were still struggling just to find food. The only difference is that they weren't having to uh, regularly search for food across 10 square miles uh, and walk 40 uh, miles a day on uh, to uh, find what they needed. Connor, I, I, first of all, I really appreciate uh, you saying that you might need to revisit that. Uh, that That is refreshing. Uh, as, as I said at the top of the show, I've talked to, been talking to people about this subject for the past week or so, uh, and not many of them have been as humble <laughs> as you, let me tell you. So uh, I do appreciate, I really do appreciate that. What I would say is, you know, there are plenty of resources uh, here. And, and doing a quick Google search, as I just did, isn't necessarily the best way to find a resource. Neither is watching YouTube videos. There are plenty of scientific journals you can get to. There's a thing called Google Scholar, which although it's it's not the best from an academic point of view, it's a good starting point if you don't have kind of access through your institution or whatever to uh, academic articles and stuff. And you can find lots and lots of papers through that on archaeology, especially really in to uh you know ha- the bones of people who've been found in the past and things and one of one of like I said, i've been talking about this the last week and nobody has come up with an actual article which states that the, these pe- and i know you're talking about seven feet on average but there's been claims made of eight to eleven feet and there have been no skeletons of that size found uh, and, and published in archaeological papers. And these are the, an archaeological paper, uh, journal is where this stuff would be published. That is the first part of point of call. If you ever see a headline that says, giant skeleton found 11 feet tall, the first part, part of call is to go into the article and see which journal it's been published in. Because very oftentimes it's not been published in any journal. It's just somebody's opinion or somebody who's written a book with no academic credentials behind it whatsoever. It's just the claim they're making. You know, you can always find whether it's Wikipedia, whether it's, uh, you know, just a a newspaper headline. If it's been published in a, a, a reputable journal, you should always be able to find a link to that journal article and actually go and have a look what the article says. Because even... And we've got a problem here, and this is this is a problem across the board. Even in popular science magazines, good quality popular science magazines, you will often see an article headline which it doesn't ed- exactly relate to what's in the in the paper that's been published on the subject. Uh, there, a lot of these places, even if the good resources are out to make money and like to go for the grab a headline kind of thing, so always try and get. Uh, to the to the original journal article, if you can, and Google Scholar is a good uh, like starting point, as I say, uh, for that. Unfortunately, a lot of these journals are locked behind paywalls, so you can't always access them. But you know, go to the source. Always try and go to the source. Uh, but no, I appreciate that, and I'm going to let Kelly jump in because I've been talking for far too long and give you his take. You know, the the you you guys yeah, might you hate me, but. Right? Yeah, I am a geologist, and and uh, Jimmy and Richard might hate me for this, but I am going to agree with you that uh, 10,000 years ago, people were slightly taller, and they did have a slightly larger skeleton. So that is a actual thing. Um, now, why that was, there are several different factors. We're not absolutely sure. One of the probably leading hypotheses is, is that people did have a much more athletic lifestyle back at, in that time. However... Recently, just in the past few hundred years, the trend of getting smaller has been reversed and humans are getting taller again. So we don't now. Obviously, we're not all out hunting and gathering our food and that's not what's making us taller. So it's some other um, environmental thing that is doing it. And I'm not honestly I'm not sure 
why the difference in height matters. I mean, things will change over time. We will adapt to the environment as it is. And if we don't need to be taller, you know, one of the one of the hypotheses about why we may have gotten taller is that it would it would help us to see farther across the open plains when we were searching for prey or for predators. So we're, we don't need to have that anymore. And we live in cities with houses around us, so we don't need to see as far anymore. So that height is not as important as it was. But I know why that trend is reversing right now, I honestly couldn't tell you. And I don't think uh, scientists know either. We just, we just have been able to measure that there has been reverse in trend over the last 100 years or so with people getting taller and taller on the average. Kelly, uh, I, what, the number one thing I heard about that, the correlation, is that societies with varied diets across uh, plant and uh, meats has allowed for uh, them to uh, get taller. But yeah, I get that. But we still we live we eat a varied diet of mixed vegetable and plant and meat materials today, and we actually have a better varied diet today. A lot of people in, in that time period, you might be eating the same thing no, for three well, weeks because that, about, that was I'm what was right. It. Pardon? I was saying that's what about today, why we're getting taller. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, my bad. My bad. And, well, you know, it, it, that's possible. I haven't heard that. Um, it's, I suppose it's possible. Before 10,000 years ago, though, we were probably not eating that much of a varied diet. We were, especially in a hunter-gatherer society, the amount, the types of food that were in your area was what you had to eat, and you could only eat those things when they were available to be eaten. Like fruits would only be available for three, four weeks of the year, and you would be eating a lot of that fruit while it was ripe. So you're not, back then, you were getting a much, much less varied diet than we are getting today. So I don't think that would be the cause of that higher or, or of that tall that taller people i had a hard time saying that back then than they are today so yeah i mean maybe maybe we are we are eating healthier over the last hundred years that is probably making us healthier as a whole and that may and in fact influence the size of our body so i could see that happening i'm just not sure what uh what all this matters that that's my i you know yeah, it's happening. People do change over time. They'll change uh, height, weight, body mass. That's another thing that has changed. We really think that people have lost a lot of body mass since then, too. Now, I mean, say a lot. We've gotten slightly shorter. We've gotten slightly smaller or it's since the people 10,000 years ago. So it's, it's not really that big of a change on the average. So uh, your question about why this matters, you know, you're right at the core of it for society. It doesn't really matter. I actually just find uh, it to these to be fun conversations to be had. Like, is sure. there tr any like what is the kernel of truth to anything in all these uh, ancient stories? What, what truth were we looking for? What truth were we looking for in people's no. height? I'm sorry. Well, if it was a plausible thing, like, was it possible? That's the kind of uh, conversations I enjoy. Yeah, yeah sure. Connor, I, I mean, I, we can, I, go ahead, I, I Richard. I was going to say that, we can Connor, test and... these because we can measure skeletons. But go ahead, Richard. Yeah, I think there's this something you've just said, which is really, really interesting there. And there's a, there's a definitive difference between there being a kernel of truth in something, which I have no problem with, and somebody claiming that there were giants who, live, who were 8 to 11 foot tall who populated the region in the Bible and lived, and this proves the Bible to be true. Now, these are very, very different things because a kernel of truth, as we've already said when we were talking about those seven tallest tribes in Africa, uh, you might find, uh, you know, in a, in a tribe which has got an average height of 6 foot 3, a member who's 7 foot 11. And when you're writing stories, Dan, this person could achieve kind of legendary status. And, uh, you know, that's plausible. And there's nothing supernatural about it. There's nothing outside of the mundane about it. But when it gets translated into a story, which then turns into there were a race of giants that lived, 
that's where th that kernel of truth we have to say well what does this actually mean to us because we can accept a kernel of truth that's fair enough no problem with that whatsoever but does that evidence a race of giants who were 8 to 11 feet tall you know i would say no uh, but you, you know i appreciate the conversation you're bringing to us because you do seem like a good, you know, you're good natured and, you know, you're having this conversation in, you know, good faith. And I appreciate that very much. Hey, it's always fun to, and nice to call into the show. Yeah, well, um, I, I'm back now and I just want to say thank you very much to Kelly for coming in and, and giving his perspective, uh, giving some expertise. Boy, am I glad that I called him in. And uh, Connor, I just want to say, Fair point. I mean, yeah, uh, the agricultural revolution didn't solve everybody's problems. There was certainly still famine uh, and it didn't take place all at the same time and, and all over the world. So, yeah, um, nothing is ever monolithic, is it? And that that actually is kind of a good characterization of of maybe the way that um, I was kind of characterizing human ancestry or, or, or human history versus the way that Kelly was. You know, pretty much everything Kelly said is 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 counter to what I have. I, understood or 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 the timeline that we have lived by as a species so uh i'm glad that we're you know we're able to kind of have this conversation and and give different points of view gives me an opportunity to get better uh gives us all an opportunity to learn something new and so that's what that's what it's all about let's relate it back to the aca mission this is definitely a conversation that i wish more people were having instead of these conversations where they are positing a deity or some kind of supernatural power, um, and there's really nothing nothing to back it up at all. You know, I, I would much rather have people accept the fact that humans have been around for an extremely long time, and that there are still a lot of gaps to fill in. Um, and you know, these conversations, the studying, the research, uh, it is all going to make it more understandable and more digestible. So, uh, I think that's going to be my closing comments. Connor, thank you so much for calling us. Did you have anything else? Nope, that's it. I'll let y'all go. I got to get to stuff I need to do. I also got to get on the right. road. All right, man. Keep tuning in, and uh, thank you very much for the call. So uh, 